not. He was not in. Oliver? I don't know the name. Oscar. Oh my god. <laughs> Such a memorable character. Hello, readers. Hello. This is the video that people have been waiting to see. I'll just do a little brief introduction to Book Corner. We decided to call this Book Corner because my bookshelves are in a corner because we're not original, but we're not even doing it in front of the bookshelves because we needed room for our nuggets. So basically what we do is we read the same book each month and then we just have a sit down at the end of the month and discuss the book. This month we're eating nuggets Next month, we're going to have an international snack crate, and we're going to be trying snacks from different places of the world. I think the one I ordered was Hawaii, and we're going to talk about a book. But right now, we're going to talk about the current bane of my existence, and that is... Oh shit, you have a dust jacket for that? Yes. Oh. I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I want to preface this entire video by saying this book came to some people at like prime time. Like they needed this book in their life so much and it worked so well for them. Unfortunately, I'm not at that point of my life and this book was, in my own personal opinion, and I think Noah's too, mm -hmm. a hot mess. I hated it. Does anybody smell beef? Because we're about to roast. So what were your initial thoughts? Like, oh, she fell. She is, she's not in the camera. Yeah, she is. Barely. There she is. <laughs> so if you had to rate this book out of five, what would you give it? Oh, God. Assuming five is 100%, percent yeah. one would be 20%, right? Yeah. Or you could just do, like, perfect, very good, good, okay. You could use half stars. I'd say it was well-intentioned. That's not a star rating. Uh, um, and I need a star rating. Well, I don't need one. I'm just curious. 1.5? Ooh! Okay. <laughs> so you would give it a 1.5. Yeah. I gave it a 2 on Goodreads. Ooh. But upon further reflection on how much I just did not love this book, I would also give it a 1.5 or possibly a 1. Damn. This is going to be a very spoiler-filled discussion because we haven't talked about anything that's happened in this book. And so we're just about to air all of our feelings about every situation. So what we're gonna try to do each month is do more backlisted titles so that hopefully more people have read them. But if you haven't read this and you have any attention to, don't keep watching because we will be spoiling things that happen. All right, so the entire book starts off with Noah Hi. getting bullied like really 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 bad this is like, relatable already getting no but like <laughs> people like threatening to push him off a cliff oh yeah I remember at like devil's cove or whatever it was yeah, called yeah devil's something it, this was like not bullying it was sadistic these guys were out to kill this little chubby guy noah yes they were out it to was kill weird Bella. and that was that was fucking i literally wrote down sociopaths yeah yeah it was unreasonable for 13 year olds yeah well one was older one was 15. one was 17. oh zephyr was four years older was he yeah fry was two years older still still right like yeah. it's like at that point it would be like attempted murder of a child yeah like, yeah like i've never met a 15 or 17 year old who like would do that? No. And if they would, they wouldn't make a big deal out of it. They just do it. And that was the first part of my, like, what the fuck is this book? Mm hmm. Experience for how long did it take me to read this? Too long. Oh my god. It took me like 14 days to read this. And it's only 370 pages. So. Another thing that bothered me, just like straight off the bat, was how Noah would draw two people together and pretend they were real life couples. Like he used to draw, draw Zephyr and Fry. Oh, he made fan fiction of his bullies. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's really fucked up when people make fan fiction about real people. Yeah. Like you can make fan fiction about characters because they're not real people. But once you pull real people into it, it can really like mess up a friendship no, I agree. or a relation. Like I don't think that's necessary. And I thought a 13 year old, if you're that horny to see two guys together go watch porn. Noah was the horniest 13 year old of all time. Dude. That's true. I am going to sum up this entire book in one vine right here. So no head. Everyone in this book was horny and that's fine. Like live your life, I guess. It was a little much at times. It was a lot much at times. Okay. How did you feel about the writing? Um. It's like all the bad parts of Lord of the Rings. It's so flowery. It's so goddamn, it's so fucking unbearable to read. It's no 13 year old talks like that. Or things like that. No! 
No one does. It's weird. No, the writing for me was such a flop. I know exactly what it was like. Okay. You know the book Lolita? Mm-hmm. Where it's all about like that pedophile once a day, the 12 year old. Mm -hmm. It's like he wrote a book from a 13 year old boy's perspective. That's my time where, but that's exactly what it was like to me. Yeah, I can kind of see it. I don't vibe with descriptive writing. I like dialogue. They didn't even give descriptions of the characters though. I have no idea what any of them look like. Yes, that is true. They didn't describe the characters at all but they describe everything around them to the point where I can probably tell you each sketch in Noah's sketch pad, but I couldn't tell you a fucking thing about what he looked like. Jude had the hair. And Noah like buzzed his hair later on. Yeah, you have no idea what they look like. Yeah, mm -mm. that's actually very valid. Yeah, I guess if you're like a closeted 13 year old kid, and you can self-insert into the story. Mm -hmm. I was not able to self-insert into the story. Yeah. So I was just like, what the f Who am I picturing right now? You know what there I mean? were a lot of times where, like, this story would have definitely worked for people in this specific situation. Yeah. But for us, because we're not, the writing and the whole situation just didn't connect with us, either of us. Which I'm so happy that the first book we're discussing is one that we just hated. I know. Let's just chat about when we jump into Jude's first chapter. Okay. And the mom is just fucking dead. Oh yeah, the walker she died. How did you feel about that? Um, I like Jude's chapters better than Noah's. Mm -hmm. I thought that the writing was a bit better. It was more bearable. And I actually thought the way that they, that who wrote this book? Jandy Nelson. Okay. The so, way that Jandy Nelson, that sounds like someone who wrote this book, <laughs> wrote the grieving process felt really real. Yes, this book really did tackle grief. In a productive, I think it was a productive way. That author had to have like had the same situation. Yeah, it had to have been like something very similar because it did touch on grief. It did touch on how the loss of a loved one can completely just change everything for you. Mm. But how did you feel about like the fact that like three sentences in the chapter and it's like so mom's dead? Because I was just like, hello. I don't mind that. I do. But. The problem was, the mom wasn't a very good person, so I didn't feel that bad about it. Well, I didn't know that yet, just diving in. Yeah. Like, into chapter two, I was like, hello? I think it can set up good tension for, like, a reveal later on. Which it tried to, but I guess But the away. mother was such a bad character, you're like, oh, okay, bye, bitch. Like, you honestly don't really care. No, I didn't give a shit. No, me neither. <laughs> Which sucks, because I feel like the point of the story is to feel something for Jude and Noah. Who, oh, no, they're all horrible. I don't feel anybody. Who right just, like, lost their mom, you know, their dad's a little bit absent, all this stuff. But I, I don't like anyone in this book. No. The only person I like was Guillermo. I think it's Guillermo. You know, Guillermo? Guillermo del Toro. Oh. <laughs> Guillermo. But I think he was the only person I genuinely liked in this book. Yeah, he was also shitty, but, like, he was, he was like, the abusive artist stereotype. Yeah, there were a lot of stereotypes in this book. Oh, my God. Like, it was... Full to the max of stereotypes. What was your favorite one? Oscar. A pretentious, preening, fucking misogynistic loser. He was such a loser. Such a whore. Here, here's what it is. If Tumblr was like a... A girl in middle school who carried a sketchbook and like had her first orgasm, it would be imagining Oscar. Yeah. I just had a revelation. Are you ready for me mm -hmm. to drop a bomb? Those students in Oscar, they were perfect representation of this book as a whole. Preening, self-important, with nothing real, really meaningful to say. Oh my god. Uh, it was just a lot of shitty things that people do that they get away with because they're different. Holy mm -hmm. fuck. The fact that Oscar was written as a compelling love interest shows me the fucked up psychology of whoever wrote this book. <laughs> yes, I agree. Because there's, Ollie... there's someone who would unironically watch The Phantom of the Opera and go like, yeah, this is a good man for me. Oliver was just not, he was not in it. Oliver? I don't know his name. Oscar. Oh my god. <laughs> Such a memorable character. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too focused on my nuggets. Fair enough. Let's talk about the fact that Grandma Sweetwine is a ghost that keeps visiting Jude. Yes! I don't want to! <laughs> there was an entire two-page fucking situation where Jude was getting a message from her dead grandmother. Yes. And it's like, I, I personally, I know you don't, I personally believe in ghosts and like communicating with the afterlife. You also sleep with stuffed animals. Don't, I just have them around the apartment. Anyway! <laughs> I just thought it was a little ridiculous that this person was guiding Jude in every aspect of her life. It's probably a metaphor for something. I was just thinking that. <laughs> because that's all that Jandy Nelson did was fill this fucking book with metaphor after metaphor after metaphor. 
So I feel like it was definitely like a metaphor for some sort of grief situation, but it honestly just pissed me off. Continuing to hear about Grandma Sweetwine, I was just like, it feels really still? You know what though? I think that Jude came off as really unhinged. Oh, Jude was psychotic. But, but I kind of liked the way, cause like clearly the whole point was that she, as a way of coping with her grief, she found comfort in the in the superstitions of her grandmother, mm -hmm. right? But she also found comfort in the superstitions of everything else. Right. And the, that's kind of in, like, I, I don't mind that. That's like, interesting, that's yeah, fine. but... This book is so frustrating because it wasn't just bad. There were, it was the worst kind of bad where there were good ideas in it. And but it's they just frustrating, right? It's like, fuck, come on. Yeah. That could have been interesting. Yeah, because I think the, the whole idea of Grandma Sweetwine's Bible. Yeah. I didn't understand that. Like, did she write? Yes. Like it, a code? I was like picturing everything? like a Bible, like a King James Bible or something. Where she like put notes in it? No, but it was like her handwritten like life lessons. Okay, maybe that's it. And like, okay, right? I did not love Grandma Sweetwine as a character. I do agree with you though that the idea of it could have been done really, really well. It just wasn't. But it just wasn't. After the two page situation where Jude was like, Grandma, speak to me. And Grandma was like, use the Bible. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I'm prefacing that because that was like, I want to say 40 pages in and I was like, oh my God, what did I make Noah read? I was literally like, shit. A lot comes up very quickly without any pre without any problem. <clears throat> this video is as disjointed as this book's narrative and that's the fucking tea on that, sis. Okay, so let's discuss Jude's sand women. Did you, did you know how to picture them in your head? No. <laughs> Jude basically makes sand women. And that's like what she did for art. And that's how she got into a prestigious California art school. And we're going to touch more on that later. For making sand women. I don't understand because I couldn't picture them in my head. I know she made them in a cave. Yeah. What? Yeah, she made them in a cave wait, 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 down what? on the beach. I thought it was just on the beach. There was like a an rock enclosure. An outcropping. An outcropping, out yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? And then she made sand people. And I didn't know how to picture no, them. No, neither did I. They didn't really... They described everything that you didn't need to picture. That's a good way of putting it. But everything you needed to picture, like the people, like they described Oscar. Where was it even set? Where was it? California. Oh, okay. They described Oscar a little bit. A little bit. And they described... I still have to fill in the blanks with my head. Guillermo? Guillermo. Guillermo? Guillermo. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. Whatever. They described Jeep. I'm going to call him Jeep because <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody by saying the name incorrectly. So I'm going to call him Jeep. They described him very well and I actually really enjoyed his description. Everything that I was supposed to picture in my head, like Jude Sandwomen, Noah's pictures, like I just couldn't because they yeah. gave no description. Yeah. But they gave descriptions on the 17 million different types of rocks that were outside. Yeah. And what color Jude's curtains were. Like I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously not that, but like it was that level. And I was just like, come on. Reading this book was a torturous experience. I had to force, This book put me in a reading I spot. had to force my way through each and every page. Mm -hmm. After I read it, I was like, nothing can be good in the world anymore. <laughs> I was like, there's, there's nothing good about this. How did you feel about Noah consistently being like self-portrait? I hated that so much. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it was like Noah took a shit, self-portrait, boy on a porcelain throne. And you're like, what? <laughs> it's literally exactly, yeah. that's exactly what would happen. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to blow your fucking mind. You ready? You are. It's a way of showing how much of a sensitive pussy boy he was and blew up everything around him mm -hmm. 10,000 times and made it all about him. If you ever watch Criminal Minds, okay, there's a character called Derek Morgan. Oh my god, the who, tea! <laughs> who likes to make every problem about him. We Which did, we didn't realize until so our like, third time we're re watching it and we're like, damn, this is not great. And Noah loves that. Yeah, Noah did make... Everything is about him. And it's so frustrating. He's not a very, he's not sympathetic. No, he's really not. He came off as a preening, pretentious little loser, in my opinion. I wanted him to be likable. I wanted him to be Can you blame character. Zephyr for wanting to bully him, though? <laughs> if you heard him going, portrait, boy on the porcelain, girl, like, I gotta fucking throw <laughs> and him And then saw him drawing yeah, you. Yeah, I have to do it. Drawing you naked with a big dick. Like, yeah, he Oh, do you know what's it. funny? Oh my god, he did do that, though. Yeah. 
My next point brought me to page 84, where it says, what a toilet licking idea this is. Ooh. Did you love how they use toilet licking instead of stupid? No. Do you remember Noah doing that? He did that a lot, right? He did. It speaks to something deep in his psychology about licking toilets. But no, I didn't. I feel like it might have been funny one time. Mm. But it's just kind of weird and uncomfortable now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to know my issue? Maybe and here's a, here's a parallel I drew. A Noah part. reminded me of you. What part? I don't know, but I wrote down NVLD question mark. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was aut he was autism coded all the way through. <laughs> he might have had something undiagnosed going on too. What? How did you feel about Brian? Like, let's talk about Brian. Not yeah. not the whole situation that happened with Noah and him. We'll get to that. We'll get to it. How did you feel about his character? After I liked him. I thought he was also pretentious. Brian is the kind of guy to go up to guys at parties and like quote Rick and Morty at them and go like, you might not get it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that kind of guy? Maybe because all the other characters in the story are so horrible. Unlikable. He was just better by comparison. Mm -hmm. It's like getting punched in the face after being punched in the balls. Like, this isn't that bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I personally liked Brian, and I really liked when he started throwing rocks at Zephyr. That was Brian. cool. I thought that was pretty boss. I thought his chemistry with Noah was really, really good, mm -hmm. and it was really cute. That whole scene leading up to them, like, awkwardly, like, flirting they was did really a, cute. Jandy Nelson did a very good job at writing awkward chemistry between people. Oh, yeah, because she's... Is it a woman who runs... I believe so. She's emotionally 13, clearly, by deciding this was okay to go to print. <laughs> so she probably still acts like that around people. How did you feel about the parrot? Oh, it was funny. It didn't really add anything to the end. Did you think it was funny? It was more fun than whatever else I was reading at the time. Just like, ah, parrot. I thought it was the stupidest fun. It pissed me off so much. Basically, there's a parrot in the story. Does it live just... in the house? No, like the next door house or something. Oh, I almost thought it lived in their house. Again, I don't know what their house looks like either. Yeah, So I have true. no I idea. I don't remember exactly what the parrot said, but he was like, where's Ralph? Where's Ralph? Yeah, yeah, where's yeah, Ralph? yeah. It turned out and to be, um... No, it didn't. That was just his name. I thought was... No, that was, like, Oscar's last name. Yeah, was Ralph. yeah, yeah. It wasn't the Ralph that the parrot was... Yeah, of course not. Yeah. And then they were like, oh my god, I found the Ralph. But how did... What did the parrot... Who's Ralph? Like, who's the parrot talking about? I don't know! And that's why I got annoyed, because I was just like... My <laughs> whole situation was how stupid... That was, and how that didn't get resolved even slightly. Well, they brought it up at the end. They like, did, oh, but not weird. with anything related to the actual parrot. I wanted to know who Ralph was. I just didn't want the fucking parrot in the fucking story to begin with. So, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Oscar. Yes! I actually liked him at first. Damn. I liked him at first. Okay. I was like, this is a boy who's gonna challenge Jude and her fucked up sense of... Oh! Like superstition and yeah, all, yeah, like yeah. i'm not saying superstition is fucked up because like whatever like you can believe whatever you want but she was so hell-bent on everything and if things didn't go exactly the way that the bible told her it should she like she freaked out i don't know anyone like that i liked having this person who could come in and challenge that and try to get her out oh. of that situation and then and then it didn't fucking happen <laughs> he was just as weird to me i figured him to be 25 for some reason no he was actually 19. i just like how like then oscar into a simp he was like my mom my dead mom talks to me too we have the exact same shared delusion i oh, yeah, duh, was cute, right? so fucking angry when that happened because at first there was a scene with oscar where he gave her an orange, and she was like, nope, can't take an orange, can't take an orange, because I'm supposed to fall in love with someone who gives me an orange, and oranges just aren't, like, I can't do it. Boy band. Like oranges? Ah! <laughs> but it's just like... Oranges are good, but like... Whatever, right? Like, whatever. I thought that Oscar was going to come in, and he was going to be kind of the person who challenged her about these, these beliefs, and who got her, who matured her out of feeling so stuck in that sense of grief and he didn't do anything except affirm everything she was doing and then be a dick oscar also i felt like he was like being a bit predatory towards jude yes and he does get challenged on that at the end a little bit where he like breaks up with her and says I'll bye wait till you. you're 18 like that isn't still weird bye i did like the moment where they were laying on the floor together in the art room after he heard her talk to her dead grandmother about how hot she thought he was Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? 
That would freak me out so Oh my much. god, I would be like, okay, bye-bye, <laughs> nice to know you. But he was just like, oh my god, like, this is too real, because I also speak to my dead mom. Whoa. But I thought, like, he's bullshitting to try to get in her pants. That could have been it, too, but he, I don't think he was. I just think he was at her level in so many ways that it pissed me yeah. off, because... I don't think you should ever have love interests who are deadpan on the exact same wavelength. Like, people, love interests and relationships in general should challenge you and push you to be a better version of yourself. And absolutely nothing about their relationship did that because they were so fucking dead set on being these two people who just had so many issues that they were just gonna, like, ignore. I'm just reading some of the recommendations on the back of this book. Well, it's won a lot of awards. Structurally brilliant. Listen, like, again, like I said, this book was also published in, like, 2014. Or, like, I'm so good, 2014. And it was also self-published. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get in. That's why- Copyright 2014 by Jandy Nelson. Uh, that's self-published, uh, uh, right? I think, so. wait, but that's Penguin. I know, but then it says bye. Maybe it's not. I Whatever, it makes sense. But it would make sense. But also, like, I feel like for 2014 me, Yeah. I would have ate this up. So I then wrote, why- is Oscar making out with a girl, but acting like he's in love with Jude. Because he's a fuckboy. Yes. Oscar is a ginormous fuckboy. Because J.D. Nelson fetishizes him, gives him nothing but a slap on the wrist with a little, like, boys will be boys sentiment, and then he doesn't get challenged for doing that whatsoever. Granted, I agree with all that. The dupe sheet, the only reason to know about that is because Jude was snooping in his room and hiding in his closet watching him make out with another girl. Yes, so there's, actually, I don't think they were, she was watching, I think she heard them. Oh. She heard, she heard them making out noises. I was kind of like, come on, Jude, like, get up, get the fuck out of his closet. Yeah. But also, like, probably another metaphor. I'm sure it was. Anyways, I then wrote, this book is genuinely just showing a million different ways to be horny and sad at the same time. And I think if that doesn't encompass Oh, that the should be on the dust jacket. <laughs> the entire I'll give you the sun experience. I don't know what does. So now I just want to talk briefly about Noah and Judah's characters. Yes! T. Do you want me to say Spill. something? <laughs> Noah first. Let's spill that tea. But what did Noah do to Brian? So, Noah was mad because he found out his mother was fucking another man and lying to her husband, which is bad. You shouldn't do. The mother was a terrible person. Aw yeah. Awful mother because she put her kids through that. And she also picked favorites. Yeah, she picked favorites. Like when favorites. it was convenient to her, she yeah, picked Yeah, yeah, she picked favorites. She pit them against each other. She um, lied to her husband about why they she wanted a little break. Yeah. And, and fucking cheated on him for years. And... Again, this is all excused as well in the story. They're like, oh, she was complicated. Yeah. This is all fine. And Noah, so Brian is gay. And Brian comes back from like a winter break because when they first meet, then he goes away to school, he comes back. And after Noah finds out the mom's cheat, his mom's cheating, he runs down the hill, whatever shitty part of California they live in. Just, I'm assuming there's redwood trees for I'm some I'm assuming reason. it's San Francisco because that's where she lives. Oh, there's like right by the water. Like there's a beach. Yeah. Would you want to go swimming Have in the San Francisco Bay? Have you ever fucking been to San Francisco? Yes. Yes, you know there are beaches there. I think even like in the city. No. Like, or like it more could in be the like, like, little rural Well, community. it's still considered San Francisco. Okay, fair enough. It's like the municipality. Oh, whatever, 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 whatever. Like, we stayed in what would still be considered <laughs> San Francisco. She's just bragging that we've been to San Francisco. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to get through your mind. But like... <laughs> but, um... So, he runs down the hill, and he sees Brian with a girl. He outs Brian as gay when he knows it could ruin his chances of going into a good high school. And oh, ruins like his relationship with his family. They he impli really yeah, they imply that his dad left because of it. Are you sure? Yeah, his dad leaves and they think it's because of that. I thought that he left before that happened. No, it was right after. I'll give you the sun heads in the audience. Correct us if we're wrong. I was honestly just slightly pissed off. Actually, I was very pissed off with that. It was situation. horrible. I hate... I... Like, Noah as a character was unlikable to begin with, but then he outed somebody, and I immediately was just like, uh, you don't have any forgiving qualities. I, because I he was sad. I don't care yeah. how upset you are. I don't care who you just saw cheating with who. Like, I don't give a flying shit 
Yeah. You don't out somebody, especially somebody you're supposed to be in love with. Who's already asked you not to tell anyone. Like, are you serious? No. He also destroyed Jude Sand's cat statues because he was jealous and worried that he, she would get into the art school, too. Yeah, he did that, too. And he threw away the note to their mom for yeah. their mom to go see the Sand women. Yeah. And they also, like, did passive aggressive things, like, poured water on each other's floors and stuff the whole time. And, like, uh, Noah, like, fucked up Jude's room. Like, oh, she, yeah, he did. she had, like, the painting of the naked guy on her wall, which... Yeah. Whatever. And he, like, ripped it and shredded it. Yeah, yeah. And, like, tore her room apart. All because he thought she played seven minutes in heaven with Brian when they were 13 years old. I don't. That's literally it. Th that's literally it. And I don't care how much you like a person. When you're 13 years old, I don't really personally think you can be in love with a person. True! Because you just don't really understand that yet. I would never do that. Like, I had crushes on people who ended up like liking other people, liking my friend, because the world wasn't ready for the thick that was me. I still, like, I got upset. I would, like, cry sometimes when, like, the guy didn't like me in school. But, like, that was it. I didn't ruin my friend's lives over it. Because when you're 13, the chances of your relationship sticking yeah. up until you're married is so slim like i didn't ruin anybody's life over it because i was a normal fucking human being you might be sitting there being like well sasha like you didn't have like fucked up problems yes i fucking did my my situation was not like it was not the coolest situation in the world Same. and i was still adjusted enough to not to not destroy someone's life over a crush yeah over something that he didn't even know would like what yeah happened. neither of them were out at this point and it just oh my god it bothered me no it was horrible no it was horrible. he was a shitty jude wasn't any better yeah let's talk about they jude. were nasty twins and I'm just worried. I'm worried if Jandy Nelson is in a relationship, I'm worried for that person. Because the norms, the things she thinks are forgivable. Because I, like, it, you know, everyone when they create, they put a bit of their own values in the work. Absolutely, yeah. The, what she thinks is forgivable and okay and explainable includes cheating, outing people as gay, as forgivable. Yeah, because... Because they get back together at the end. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They hug and shit at the end. Brian and... Yes, they do. And I read on the Wikipedia synopsis, they get back together. Brian and Noah? Yep. I must not have read all the way through to the end. Yep, they get back together at the end. So it's all okay. It's all... F and that's the end of the book. Everything is forgiven. When I didn't Everything actually is fine. finish the book. No one holds anyone accountable for anything. You're absolutely right. Every single thing that the characters did wrong in this book, and by that I mean like the shitty things that they did, none of it was ever challenged by anything in the story and they're just like oh that was crazy haha ha. and then they move on and, and then like, they're what? like oh my god sorry lmao and that's it and it's just like like you cheated you outed you didn't mail your brothers we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves you didn't mail her brother's application to the art school as is which was the only thing he wanted in life so and she knew it he thought that he was just garbage so he destroyed all of his art meanwhile jude was just mad at him so she didn't do that. Every single negative thing in this book was not challenged even once. It and makes I, me feel like Jandy Nelson thinks those things are all okay as long as you're angry enough. And as long as you say you're sorry at the yeah. end. Yeah. And that bothers me. The fact that so many people read this at such an impressionable age yeah. really stresses me out because it's just like a lot of the shit that happens is not okay. Yeah. In this story, a lot of the shit that gets excused, yeah. that gets forgiven without a second glance, yeah. forgiven, forgive, forgiven, forgiven, whatever. It's insane. Like if I had read this at when I 15 well, when this came out. You would have been a bigger out, bitch than you are right now. I don't think I would understand fully like relationships. Yeah. yeah. I might I might understand myself better after reading it cuz they're angsty and I can kind of relate to that. But relationships as a whole, no. No. I don't think I don't think you could really grasp no. what a healthy relationship is whether it is a hetero or a not relationship doesn't matter. it doesn't matter like these things are not okay there was not a single likable character in this book except g i thought the dad was the least unlikable of the family dad was fine but he also like abandoned his children because yeah. he was like i'm just gonna go for like six hour walks a night get yeah. your own dinner sweeties I'm sorry I made you read it. It's okay. I, I, um, I'm a better person. Do you feel better? Because you're not like them. You feel, oh my god, yeah. Like, you like, feel I would better never do because that. you're like, damn, I have morals. I think that's all for today because this video is going to be long as shit. It's already been over an hour. But that's what these book corners are going to be long because we 
we have a month's worth of conversation to catch up on about this book that whatever book we're reading so i hope you guys like the first installment of book corner and next time we'll be different we'll be over in front of the bookshelves and we'll have a crate of snacks in front of us so we'll be trying different snacks so our, de our depressing <laughs> ugly yellow wall yeah instead of this monstrosity <laughs> it looks like one of the homes in whoville after the grinch stripped it on christmas it Eve. does <laughs> like the sad little light yes oh my god <laughs> No, so yeah, we'll be in front of the bookshelves, we'll be eating snacks, we'll be roasting food and roasting books. It's been swell. I hope you guys will still stay subscribed to me. I don't blame you, but it's okay. Don't shake your head this mean. I just have feelings that are different from a lot of other people. <laughs> That's true. And until next time, bye, bye readers! readers. <laughs>